Hi there, welcome to the tutorial on creating flash props and importing them into Crazy Talk Animator. It's a really simple process thanks to Animator's content library features and flash compatibility. As you can see here I've designed a forklift with multiple separate parts in Adobe Flash. I'll take it apart here piece by piece so you can get an idea of how it's made up. In order to move my parts around more freely, I'll also turn off a couple of the snapping restrictions from the view menu. The first thing I want to do with each of my individual parts is convert them to movie clip symbols so they can be exported to Crazy Talk Animator. To do this, I can simply right click on the individual part and select Convert to Symbol. Then I'll rename my part Body to keep things organized. When I save it, you can see that it appears in the library at the bottom right of my screen. I'll do the same thing with the next part. Let's call this one a rack. After I've done saving each image as a symbol, I can delete them from the screen. When it comes to the wheels, I want to do something special. I want to give my forklift the option of having stationary or moving wheels. So what I'll do is save the wheel the same way, but after I've saved it as a symbol, I'll import in my saved symbol and save it as a second symbol called Wheel Rotate. So as the name suggests, I need to create some animation in order to get this wheel to rotate. It's quite easy actually. I can simply double click on my symbol to edit its properties. Now I'm editing the symbol itself instead of the scene. The first thing I want to do is go up to the timeline here and select Create Motion Tweet. What this will do is allow a gradual animation from one keyframe to another, so eventually I'll need to add another keyframe. But what I want to do first is set up my rotate motion. Down in the Properties panel at the bottom, I want to select the settings for my rotation. There are a lot of different options here, but to keep it simple, I'll just make sure the sync is on repeat, and then just go over to the Rotate and select Clockwise. Right after that, I'm going to go to a future frame, let's say frame 30, and insert a keyframe which will set up the ending point for the rotation. Now as I scrub through the timeline, you can see that my wheel is magically rotating. I can also select my symbol in the library panel to the right and preview the motion by pressing the play button. Now I need to export all the individual items as flash movie files. I'll start by right clicking the body item first and selecting export flash movie. Once I find my folder I'll save the file and I'm done. I'll do the same procedure with the next symbol which is the box. Again, same procedure as the previous symbol. Remember to save separate flash files for your wheel and wheel rotate. Now I'll open up Crazy Talk Animator and import in all of my flash files one by one. To do this, all I need to do is click and drag the item in as Animator fully supports flash format. The next thing I'll do is open up the object transform window and give the object a default key. This is necessary so that the object will maintain a relative position when it is imported as a prop. Speaking of which, I'm going to go into my custom prop folder now and simply click the plus button to add this flash file as an animator prop. It's as easy as that. Because my prop has been separated into so many different parts, I can drag in a bunch of files at once and save time just by adding them once they are all on the screen. Just remember to add default keys and names to each one of them. Now what I want to do is import the main body of my forklift and enter the prop composer on the top left where I can add in all the different movable sprites. As you can see, I didn't save the rotating wheel because I'll add that later. As I import in my wheel, I'll get a message warning that the motion data will be removed. Since I don't have any yet, I don't need to worry about that. Once I import in my wheels, I need to position them in the proper place on my forklift's body. Once I do that, you can see that when I select the forklift's body and move it, the wheels will maintain position relative to the main body now. Now when I import in my rack, I need to make sure that the red rotation indicator is located at the point where I want the rotation axis to be. I can also move it down the scene hierarchy a little bit to make it look further back. Now when I import in the second part of the rack here, I'm going to do something a bit different. I want to link Rack01 to the main rack. With Rack01 selected, I'll go up to Link, then select the main rack. Now I can rotate the rack and the entire thing will move separately as one piece. You can also notice the change in the scene hierarchy to the bottom right. 
The next thing I want to do is import in my rotating wheel so when I move this forklift, the wheels are also moving. I'll first select the wheel and then go into the sprite editor. As you can see, there is an empty spot for the other sprites. I want to select that and select Insert. Once I find my rotating wheel, I'll click OK. I can preview the rotating wheel by pressing the play button in the sprite editor window. I'll just do the same thing for the other wheel and preview that one as well. Once the entire thing is assembled, I can save it as a complete prop right here in composer mode. Then what I want to do is exit back into stage mode. After the updates have completed, you will see the final product. Pretty cool, right? Now I'll demonstrate how to use the sprite editor to do some simple animation. I'm going to set a frame limit for my scene by clicking and dragging the red indicators below the timeline first, then play to the last frame. If I select the rotating wheel element in the sprite editor, my wheel will rotate by default. So now as you can see the wheels are rotating but the vehicle isn't moving. At that frame I want the body to move ahead. A green line will follow my prop to show its path. Now when I play back, the vehicle will move and the wheels will simultaneously rotate. I'm going to add in an absolute key at the end which will add a keyframe to every sprite the prop is composed of. This is because I want to do another action with the rack. I'll move the lower part of the rack up here and then advance to a future frame. In this frame, I'm going to rotate the entire rack backwards. So the sequence will be drive, lower rack raise, and upper rack tilt. That's what you can see happening here. But one problem is that the rear wheel is still spinning after the forklift stops. To adjust this, I can go into the timeline and select the motion path for the prop, then open the wheel tracks. You'll see there are two keyframes for the start and ending position. At the ending position, I want the wheels to stop moving, so I'll move to that frame and then use the sprite editor to select the stationary wheel. Now when I play back, you can see that both wheels will stop once the motion destination is reached. I didn't make the box as part of the prop, so now I'm going to import it into the scene, right now at the beginning of the animation, and attach it to the prop. After I position it in the correct place, I'll just select the Link tool on the top toolbar, then my rack. Now when I play back, the box will go along with the rack. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, now go out there and try it yourself.